Here's a situation that will take place very rarely, but it's still good to know and be aware that it could happen, and that is how we would see an error be charged to a fielder even if a batter does not reach base or a runner advance to the next base as we would traditionally see take place with an error being charged. And the way that this would occur is that a fielder miss a foul ball, um, a pop-up in foul territory, and this, this would then um, extend the time of the batter at the plate. And this is going to, this error will be charged regardless of whether the batter eventually reaches base or is um, put out. So the way that this would take place is, I'm sure you, you can imagine, uh, maybe say our third baseman is here, the, the batter hits a high pop-up into foul territory, it's going to come down here, the third baseman, he jogs over, he's got plenty of time to get underneath the ball, uh, the ball hits him in the glove and it, it, it falls out. Um, and then the official scorer then judges that the third baseman should have been able to catch this ball using um, the quote-unquote ordinary effort that is prescribed by the, the rule book. Um, and therefore, the scorer could charge the third baseman uh, with an error on this play. And this doesn't matter then even if the batter goes back and he strikes out on the next pitch. Um, then obviously that would be a strikeout, but this error would remain. And the same thing goes for if the batter goes back up to the plate, he singles into right field or anywhere, um, then the, the batter would obviously be credited with that base hit, and yet this third baseman um, on that foul ball would still be charged with that error. So there it is. That's how a fielder can be charged with an error even if uh, nobody gets on base or a runner doesn't move up to the next base on that play.